or the anatomy of various capotes. And we've got three main three main types of capillaries here. So we have continuous. I'm gonna put a little asterisk here, most abundant, most common. This is what we're going to be speaking about in terms of the exchange of nutrients and oxygen and carbon dioxide across tissue. So this is probably what we will refer to the most going forward. We've also got fenestrated capillaries. A lot more, um, not as common, you know, more rare throughout the body, but we did speak about some examples such as the kidneys and the endocrine system. And then finally, even more rare are the discontinuous capillaries, also called sinusoids. So we've got a continuous capillary, fenestrated capillary, and then discontinuous capillaries actually have openings in their basement membrane as well, okay? So it's not a continuous basement membrane the way that we see in the other types. Let's look at the continuous first. So we've got these endothelial cells. Oops. Endothelial cells here, remember there's a one cell layer thick. So here's a one endothelial cell, a small window or opening here, another endothelial cell, another endothelial cell. Okay. And so the opening in between these endothelial cells is quite narrow. And so it only allows for protein free plasma to pass through here. So we've got a narrow Epithelial gap, not epithelial, excuse me, endothelial gap. <clears throat> so a narrow endothelial gap. Which allows for water soluble, small molecules to pass through. Okay, we also see low, slow movement and low movement as well, right? Because if we have smaller particles going through, we also have slow movement of particles, not as free flowing, if you will. And then we also said that these are the most abundant. Okay. Okay, so I'm seeing a question here. Is the membrane of a capillary a lipid bilayer? Um, so the cell here is not a lipid bilayer, it has a basement membrane, and then it's got endothelial cells. That's a really good question though. If it were a lipid bilayer, we would not allow for water soluble molecules to go through, okay? Excellent question. Um, and this basement membrane is really, really thin. It's a very thin, tiny layer, it's pretty much negligible. All we really have in terms of the barriers to diffusion are really these endothelial cells that are you know, stacked against each other. Um, the fenestrated capillaries, on the other hand, have a lot larger openings in between them in terms of these fenestrations or pores or windows. So I'm going to try to draw that here best I can. So we've got this endothelial cell, a larger gap in between, another endothelial cell, an even larger gap here, endothelial cell. Okay. So the gap here is even larger than what we saw in terms of the continuous capillaries. So 
So a wider endothelial gap. which we also call fenestrations. This allows for a rapid or more free flow, rapid flow. This also facilitates the movement of slightly larger molecules, so like proteins and cells. Okay, and then uh, if I get some space at the bottom here, we'll put some of the tissue examples that I talked about. So the kidneys, the GI system is another example, and then the endocrine system. Okay, and then the final branch of capillaries, the discontinuous, which we said were even more rare, have a disconnected or discontinuous, as the name implies, basement membrane. So they're actual uh, openings in the basement membrane, which allows for even more uh, flow of even larger molecules in between. So we have these large openings of not just the endothelial cells, which I'm doing a terrible job of drawing here, um, but also the basement membrane as well. Okay, so there's absolutely no impediment to what can go through here or blockage, okay? And this is a di discontinuous or a sinusoidal uh, capillary. And let's just describe that here a little bit. We said that the transfer here is more rapid or more free flowing. Um, this is also the branching between uh, fenestrated um, to the larger type of sinusoids, okay? So essentially there are these blood-filled sacs. We see a free open flow of molecules, which in some areas as we described is ideal, right? Like in the bone marrow. And the examples we pointed out were the liver, the bone marrow, and then the spleen. The spleen is where red blood cells have to be recycled after they're dead and um, where they go to die and be recycled, I should say. And so we also need to see that transfer of these cells to get into the spleen as well. So the liver, the bone marrow, and the spleen are some areas where we see these open, uh, discontinuous, or sinusoidal capillaries. Okay. 